would like to introduce our final speaker, Dr. Smita Kumar. Smita is a yogi, educator, and a researcher, and has performed varied roles over 22 years across corporates and academia. She holds a doctorate in human and organizational learning from the George Washington University and is certified in teaching yoga and meditation. She has extensive transnational experience across India, Philippines, Morocco, and USA. Currently, Smita works as a mindfulness facilitator, researcher, engaging in conducting workshops, individual sessions, and academic courses. Smita's mindfulness journey is rooted in both Hatha Yoga and Buddhist meditations. Smita has taught Hatha Yoga and meditation classes across several countries to over 3,000 people for nearly a decade. I call upon Smita Kumar to share a few words. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much, Pranjal. Thank you, Neerab, for having me here. Um, I think before I begin, I wanted to share the beginning of my journey with yoga. So I, I was in the US to do my PhD after working in the corporate for nearly a decade. Um, I did not want to become a yoga teacher. So that's another story how I ended up being there. But one of the workshops that I did was uh, teacher training for trauma survivors. And uh, there were people who had different kinds of trauma, starting from health issues to sexual trauma, to loss of dear ones, to everything. And the trainer who had come there, he'd been working in the field for more than, I think, 15, 20 years. And he said only one thing, what comes to your mind when, you, when I say the word trauma? And we were a group of, I think, around 15 people, and everybody racked their brain, and the, the trainer was not happy with the answer because he was looking for a specific word. And uh, none of us talked about it. We talked about pain. We talked about suffering. We talked about loneliness. We talked about lifelong disability, like all sorts of things. And what he was looking for is the word resilience. And I think to me, that was the beginning of understanding my own trauma. So my trauma is mainly rooted in being in an abusive relationship and, uh, and surviving that. And so for the first time, I felt that the other side of coin for trauma is resilience. Um, two and a half years ago, really when the COVID was starting, a very dear family friend of mine was diagnosed with breast cancer. And she went through a harrowing experience because it was really the beginning of COVID and um, just the whole diagnosis, treatment and everything. And, and she said that in her own words, like everything, the way like it could go worse happened for her, like complications, infections, everything. And I just felt so helpless because I was in another country. Anyway, I couldn't have been with her. She was in different isolation and different kind of a setup. But it brought me in touch with somebody who I really looked up to and was close to me going through this. And one fine day, she reached out to me saying, Smita, do you do yoga for people who survive cancer or specifically breast cancer? And I just looked at her and I said, no, I don't. And so it was very surreal when almost six months back, when my first interaction with Neerad happened and he invited me and he said, would you like to, um, you know, design programs for this group? And, and so, it, you know, the dots connected for me. But I was very, very nervous because I didn't have any first-hand experience, either a caregiver or in any other way with this group. Um, and thanks to Neerad for remembering and sharing that incident. But I was absolutely honest with him that, look, I can't just design a program. I need to know the group as much as possible as I can. And so the journey began where I started speaking to people who are, who are survivors, either who have been through this years ago or who are recently going through it. And, and every incident or every opening where they let me in to their journey of going through something which is so, you know, um, traumatic, life-defining, and so many other things that you can, you know, um, attribute to it. And, and so that was a privilege in itself, but it also opened me into this whole knowing that while there is there are uniqueness to this, one like Hiba was sharing that I can never understand what you go through, even if we have had similar experiences. So that's the starting point. But there is an aspect of what I said, the pain and the trauma, and we're going through a traumatic experience and what is the journey thereafter? Um, there were a lot of openings when, 
you know, the person on the other side was sharing their experience and I had some experience with my trauma and we both connected. We found a mutual ground, you know, whether it was shedding a tear or smiling or just exchanging some experiences which resonated for both of us. So that was something which gave me confidence to sharing uh, my you know, little bit of knowledge that I have acquired on yoga and meditation that, okay, you know, there is some commonality and this resonates so we can work with this. Uh, through the experience, I think several things came where um, I learned that, you know, it is one thing to say that the world expects you to be positive, but it has to come from within. For example, um, like, uh, you know, I heard either Hiba talk about it or even Siddhi that, um, you know, who decides to be positive? Is somebody else going to tell me or it's coming from within? Being authentic in your experience or acceptance. Acceptance comes with the process. It doesn't happen on day one. You know, you go through the journey. And so a lot of them said that I don't want people to tell me to be brave. I don't want people to tell me to be positive because there are days I can't even get up from the bed. You know, there are days I can't move. And so for me, the challenge was that then what do I do? You know, when I'm thinking about a med meditation program or pranayam or yoga asana or whatever, how can you provide options to people when they are going through such diverse experiences and those experiences are changing moment to moment, not even day to day, moment to moment. And so what do you do? So when, you know, Nirad and I spoke, we said, okay, it would be a host of programs that we would look at, starting from what is called a simple relaxation that you hear, like an audio, to a deep relaxation, which is called yoga nitra, to going into different kinds of pranayam. Now, again, the simple one will be just holding the space and guiding, inhale, exhale, and slowly making it longer and longer. That's it. To moving into doing something called Brahmari, where there is academic research that shows that when you practice Brahmari, it helps people who are cancer survivors or who are going through the treatment. Or there is another, um, you know, pranayam where you actually hold the breath where you inhale and hold, you exhale and hold when your lungs are empty, like the whole cycle. And that is, there is research which that it actually helps in patients who've gone through bone marrow transplant for the new cells to get generated. So then finding the specific pranayam and then doing it together so that you can look at the video and you can do it as and when you feel ready for it. Then the other thing was that when you do simple asan, no matter where you are in your whole spectrum of, okay, I can move a little bit to really, I, I can be a lot more physically active. So we said, okay, we will start with, you know, options of when people can only do poses when they are lying down on the bed or a couch. So yes, there could be some option for that. Then for people when they're on chair, so they can get onto the chair and then do movements and then still feel the benefit of these poses. And then, of course, we can move into the stage where we have standing poses and different kind of sessions. So there are a whole host of, um, you know, options that we are looking at. And in my limited view, I feel it's just the beginning. We are not even at the tip of the iceberg right now because these practices are so um, ancient and so powerful that um, we ourselves don't know. And when we talk about research, largely research comes from the Western perspective and the science, because if you look at our tradition, which is the Indian tradition, there's not too much about research in that sense. It's like you experience, you practice, and you will know what are the benefits and how it works for you, because each individual is a different, unique being. And one asana may work for me very well, but for you, it may not work. Um, but at the same time, we realize that we need to have research. So there is a lot of research that's already happening, which is showing that different aspects work. Not, I'm not talking about yoga being a replacement to the treatment, but aiding in people who are going through the treatment or after that, which is what Neerad was talking about, that how do we have this holistic approach where we can work with uh, providing a certain um, you know, life um, enriching and nourish, nourishing system. So, um, yeah, so I would say it is just the very beginning, at least for me, it is the beginning of this journey. And I'm so deeply touched, humbled and honored to be part 
of this. And um, it's absolutely heartening to see how the youngsters have organized this event and are hosting it together. So thank you so much for having me here. Thank you.